This is working? Great. Don't worry, there is a presentation. But uh, first I want to ask, uh, how many people went to Jake Williams' master class yesterday? Nice. How did it go? Jake, you're not supposed to answer that question. It kind of <laughs> defeats the whole purpose. Um, so after that incredible master class, Jake received a lot of questions about the technical aspect and all these things. But then there are a lot of questions about, wait, who the hell are you guys? What, what is the Wii company? What is Wii work? And why do you need 20 artists to do renderings? So I wanted to kind of kick this off with a, with a video that helps pretty much introduce and recap exactly who we are as a company. From the first day that we started we work, it was about bringing people together. We're cultivating a culture of kindness. There is a mass of human beings that actually care about the planet and want to impact it. Our goal has always been to build more than beautiful office spaces. We wanted to unlock the potential for individuals to pursue their purpose. We've created a physical world equivalent of a digital platform. Beyond community, our technology and services power the world at work. Our software finds the best buildings in the best locations. Before we even begin construction, we build full 3D models to make sure we're creating environments that allow members to thrive. We collect data from hundreds of existing WeWork locations all over the world and use it to inform our design process. This lays the groundwork for a precise plan. When construction begins, our teams can build quickly and efficiently. Speed is important because on average, we open two new locations every single day. Our technology empowers us to continually improve our product and scale fast. We provide something no one else can, a truly global network of spaces that give organizations flexibility, lower costs, and enhance the employee experience. More and more, global enterprises are seeing the value of our community. But our mission is bigger than work. The WE Company is building the first global platform designed to bring people together to live purpose-driven lives. We have to reimagine how the world works, lives, and grows. The single most important word is WE. Okay. Uh, all right, I'm done. Thank you. All right, now we can get to the presentation. Okay, the Wii Company Visual Studio. I've titled this Choosing the Path Less Traveled because we are a very unique studio. We are not an in-house architectural rendering studio. We are not a architectural visualization studio serving clients. We're we're a new breed, and I'm trying to pretty much introduce to the world, in, into the world what makes us unique and so different. So who the hell am I? I uh, I've been at the Wii Company for about three and a half years. I started the department. I uh, have an interior design background. Obviously, one thing led to another, and 3D rendering kind of took over. And so 10 years later, here we are. You guys don't really need to hear much more about me, but I think after a couple beers, later on, you will. A uh, quick recap of all the numbers we have as a company. It's a lot. And just about two days ago, we got new numbers. So we're in 485 locations, 110 cities across 28, uh, 25 countries with now close to 500,000 members worldwide. And though that's, that's a lot. And you can see the numbers doubling almost every single year. So 2020 is pretty terrifying. So why do, you, why do we need a visualization studio? Why do we have to do renderings at such a, such a scale that we do? On average, we open 25 to 30 new locations every month. And our job is to create renderings and a digital footprint in these locations that have no presence. And our team produces all these images and animations and virtual reality three to six months before these locations open so the marketing and sales have an opportunity to hit the ground running so early on. Because our process from a lease to opening day, all through design and the whole process 
is about six months total. And so everything kicks into gear. Everything is so, so quick. But first, I want to introduce my team, these wonderful human beings. I have a team in the US. team in the UK, and we're growing. Uh, just this year, we hired everybody. <laughs> it was just me and Jake for the first two years, and all of a sudden, our hyper growth kicked in, and we really had to really take it to the next level and just hire as many people as possible. So this opportunity for us is to learn from our past and all the other places we've worked, and it was just a fresh new start. So when I was tasked to start the department and run it, I was like, okay, I'm gonna lay down some groundwork right now. This is how things are done. Because of what I've learned in previous positions that we wanted to make sure this didn't happen again. So this is basically where we come in during the whole process of building start to opening. You can see that we come in after the design because my team, you'll hear, you hear me talk about this a lot, we need to scale with this company. So the old way of running a team just does not work with a hyper growth company. Um, we don't start a project until the design is 100% complete. So we don't do design iteration renderings. Um, the architects don't tell us what to do. Interior designers pass along a project and we have complete control from start to finish with cameras, finishes, lighting, entourage, storytelling. I know you're all jealous. And that's one of the things that makes us so unique because of our hyper growth. Everybody just needs to do what they do and move on and trust that the next person and team can do it. So what's great is that our typical workflow is that we create four to seven still renderings in 10 days. Um, and so if you have seven teams creating about two projects a month, you, that's a lot. And what's great about that is every single project that we do comes to life and we're able to see the product three to six months later and compare it side by side. So a little mission statement that I kind of created for our team is innovating through optimization empowers the artists to create and grow. Um, so a couple things that we really wanted to make sure and think about that didn't really work in previous positions we wanted to kind of solve for. So the typical workflow of a production line where one person does this, one person does that, another person does lighting, only does modeling, only does post-production, that's not gonna work for our workflow. So we, we began to rethink our jobs, our job titles. We don't need you know, the standard junior, middle, senior, creative director, blah, 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 blah. It's, it's always the same shit that you get everywhere. And so for us, we had an opportunity to step back and say, this is such a unique company that we need to rethink everything from the beginning. We want to pretty much give the power back to the artists. And so this was the old way of doing things, when you had one individual making final decisions before content is sent out. And the individual artists were being tasked to do so many different things. And it didn't really work. This might work in other studios, sure, but for us to scale, there was no chance that I had to rely on one person, Jake, to make final decisions before content's out, because we have other things to do in order to scale. So we brainstormed and came up with this. No creative director, we have a creative manager. And what that creative manager does is pretty much get, give the tools and tutorials and videos and education from the ground up, a very baseline level, where that allows individual artists to then become their own creative directors, if you will, because then they are responsible for the end content. They send it out, so I don't have to rely on one person. I have teams. And another thing about the teams is that, well, let me start over with that. I gained some, uh, inspiration from the world of advertising. You have creative teams. You can't hire one without the other. So when you hire these teams, they are responsible for everything. You step back, two weeks later, they give you something, and then you review, you talk, you, you think about it. So what this teams of two does 
It gives the full responsibility for a project to them. So they do lighting, they do materials, they do everything that involves from a project from start to finish, right? And if one team, if, and if one artist needs to work on lighting, well, we do a project every 10 days, they can work on the lighting on the next project. And that, that team can work on the modeling on the next one. So it's not like your typical studio where you work on one project for eight months and you hate that job. <laughs> and so you have no chance of really trying to latch on to other things that you really want to learn. So for us, it's this really this turnover rate might seem so repetitive, but it also allows a lot more creative freedom. It's scalable. There's a very high level of consistency. And there's respect and responsibility being put to your artists and your teams. There's no reason why, let's be honest, architectural visualization is not brain surgery. If you could do lighting, you're more than capable of doing post-production. And, and if you do post-production, you're more than capable of setting up cameras. And if you do 3D modeling, well, I mean, what's to prevent you from learning any of the other things? Learning photography to shoot your own entourage. So why don't we show them and give them a bit more respect and give them a full reign of responsibility and let them do it? Because we hired you for a reason. You know, I, don't, I have other things to do and then to like micromanage and tell you what to do. So this is my favorite part of the presentation. Now we're going to start getting into the work that we've done. Um, activate the space. Who has heard somebody say activate the space? Maybe it just might be a US thing, but client facing, a lot of times, you'll have these meetings and they would just say, well, I, I, I don't know, I don't know, just activate the space. Well, what the hell does that mean? Oh, a million people here, oh, I'll put a bunch of stuff there. They don't really know what they want. So how about we kind of stop activating the space? And I'm going to show you an example of what we've learned before coming to WeWork and what the thought process in these other studios that we worked at is what we had to do for a client. And that's this. And that is disgusting. And I absolutely hate this image because I did it. And that was the old mentality, right? So what happens when you activate a space? This is what happens. There's no focal point. It's just a full-on mess. That's, this is what you get. It's obnoxious, isn't it? <clears throat> so that's just a quick little pet peeve of mine. Stop activating the space. Do yourself a favor and kind of find clarity. <clears throat> find focus, right? Because at some point after we did so many of those jobs, Jake was like, this is such crap. We need to stop. We need to reevaluate because we have the chance because this is our department. Nobody's telling us what to do. So why don't we take advantage of that? It's great. So we spent some time focusing on how to adapt and evolve, right? So as we begin to think about what's important about a WeWork space is what makes it unique on a global scale. So on the left is Japan. On the right is Munich. Um, so if you really think about what you just saw to what you're seeing now, right? There's bigger, there's so much more clarity, there's so much more energy to these images. Where are all the donuts? Where are all the people? Where's the activation? The activation for this is the design, the aesthetic, and I'll get more on talking about WeWork as a product. So if you start thinking about your renderings as a product, you start getting influence from product design, fashion, uh, all kinds of different other creative worlds. China on the left, Johannesburg on the right. Don't worry, we didn't design that building on the right, nor did we model it. But you know, we got the model from the AOR. But anyway, looks great. This is not a WeWork. This is a WeWork Food Labs, different business line, I won't get into it, but you can see that same mentality coming through, right? Again, clarity, focus, let some of the other things tell the story, the furniture, the finishes, the location, uh, the architectural elements. Again, more examples of the Food Lab, I probably put, should have put that slide on there, but that's my fault. 
more on the fact that we are a product. We work on a scaling level, has to have the same sort of energy and vibe and consistency throughout the design. Therefore, we use furniture in every single project all the time. And you'll be, and you'll be able to see that throughout our images, more and more consistent, consistency coming through. That chair is there, that chair is there. So what really happens is that we have the opportunity to make sure that that chair is the most perfect chair and we'll never have to touch it again. So we'll spend hours modeling it, a whole day creating the material, and really testing the lighting so when you put it in any situation in any WeWork around the world, it's gonna look the same because it's a product, right? This side table we'll use in every single project. So why recreate the wheel? Again, so you're beginning to see what makes us so unique is because our workflow is kind of the same each, each step of the way. Each project is so similar, so we're trying to take a step back and be like, okay, where can we become more efficient and optimize and automate, which I get into a little bit. And so a location in India, much different design. What's more important, the activation of the space or that architectural element? Um, not until you put less people in your images will you understand how much better it is when, you, when you're presenting. You have to think about what it is you're selling. I'm not selling the people in the space. I'm selling how the people use the space. So it's always about the space. Honestly, I forget where these locations are. And <laughs> sometimes that's the point, right? You want to make it so consistent where I don't know what team did what, where in the world, and if the junior or the senior or the this or that, who did what, I don't know. I just see an end result that's so consistent that I don't need to ask any questions, and that's the whole point. We spend that time to make sure that that's the case. And another unique element within these locations we love to highlight, again, we choose these cameras. We choose how many cameras we do, depending on the number of desks, in a location. So if it's only 400 desks, we'll do two images. If it's 4,000 desks, we'll do six. And then we set up our own deadlines. Typically at 10 days, and I give it to the team. I'm like, team, I've got other shit to do. You have 10 days to do this. And we've created a system where Jake signs off in a few phases along the way, but ultimately, we have given them all the tools for them to, have, and to, to create with their fullest potential. And that was a whole, whole plan. So when somebody comes in and has only been in this company for one month, two or three months, they're producing the same level of content that Jake would, who's been here for three and a half years. That's the point. You trust these artists, you give them the tools, and they will become their own creative directors. Again, more product showcasing. How the women are using the space. The interaction at the front desk. Furniture, product. You know, if a one point doesn't work or a two point doesn't work, we go up, look down, because we gain inspiration from product designs, fashion, architecture, furniture. More about the product space. That was too quick. But anyway, again, these special moments, a lot of depth of field, depth of field in every single image we do, every single one. What makes it so unique? You'll never see those elements in these nooks anywhere in the world, anywhere else. Again, China? I think so. I'm not entirely sure. This is one of my favorite images about showcasing the furniture. Those ottomans we use in every single location. And it's all about the material and the shader that we created that we don't have to trust. We just throw it in there. Stop reinventing the wheel every time. We don't need to do that because we have such a, we have a catalog, the product catalog, we just throw things in. And so again, now you're beginning to see how we are so efficient and 10 days is enough time to create six of these high level renderings. This is a project we did with this company called The Wing, which is an uh, all female co-working company who just introduced their first location in London. And it was a company that we invested in and they came to us to help them visualize their space. So I'm just very proud of this one. This is very unique and it's just absolutely beautiful. Oh, how the hell did this get back in here? It's, it's garbage, right? So now you're beginning to, again, continue to see how ridiculous some renderings are and how much you don't need to just stop. You know, of course, clients, but again, this is our company and it's our decision, and this is what we 
do. What I'm most proud of, I think, is our level of commitment to putting people in our images. And if you went to Jake's masterclass yesterday, you'll understand the insane amount of detail that goes into this. We don't have a professional uh, photo studio. We don't have a budget. We just have an office of diverse people that just happen to be sitting in the same exact furniture that we put in our renderings because our HQ looks like any we work in the world. Right? So we'll just find people around the office like, oh, don't move, but just sit in this chair. And my team will just measure with the camera in 3D Max, set it up, boom. Don't, don't overthink it. You don't need a budget for photography if you don't need one. You just need a decent camera and someone that knows how to push a button. You know, that Photoshop, hello, it's there for a reason. So we don't overthink it. Get the lighting and that's it. Right? Custom photography in every project. It's re real simple, no green screen, nothing, just natural environment, put it near the light, don't overthink it. They're just hanging out down there, and we just look around the office with our rendering like, you, you wanna be a model? Dogs are extremely important. The first question we ask every time we start a project is, do they allow dogs? Because honestly, dogs sell much better than humans. Um, just, just a known fact, so I don't need to go on in much detail about that. Beautiful, good dog, very good boy. Again, more custom. You can see the difference. Deactivate the space, but allow yourself to see how the space is being used by people in which you curate. Perfect. Now I want to show you a quick video of the level of detail that goes into the entourage that we put in, but will nowhere near be as much information as what Jake kind of put out there. I'll let this loop a couple times. See? It's not just putting somebody you get off Google or the same Viz people, no offense to them at all, but like they work and sometimes we use them for our enterprise clients. Um, but you know, we have an opportunity to just step away and really rethink how we do things. So I kind of want to just show one more video that my team put together before I get on to the second part of this presentation. Give it up for my team real quick. They can't be here, but. <laughs> Let's get back to the presentation. Of course, we gotta keep bringing it back to this. Trust me, if, if you find me later, there's a whole slew of these from 2016, and they're so bad. But, you know, it is what it is. So just a couple, before we get into the next part, render versus photo, 
Because again, now that the, the, the photography team on site, when they open two months after we create the renderings, they're, they're gonna match up our renderings, and it's so much fun to see. Again, it's so great to see an end product. And then when you travel around the world, you can go to these locations, because we have so many. And you can see your renderings and compare. Jake, the carpet's the wrong way. Un unacceptable. And so you can see the background's pretty accurate is because we went on site in New York. We just went downtown, went up to the floor because we have access to all of our locations. So when we can, we just get somebody with a camera. Again, never hire anybody. Just even if it's an iPhone, we'll get something. We'll get a reference. We'll, we'll ask somebody on site. The community manager on site would say, hey, does anybody in the building have a camera? Somebody say, yeah, and then we'll get that. Again, it's this whole connection that we have during a project. It's not just a client telling us what, what to do work 80 hours a week, and go home and feel like shit. Again, not exactly perfect, but you can see that it, the architecture, um, the layout, the carpet, and we gain inspiration and all this data from all these projects we have because we see the end result. We see if our carpet is not reading correctly because, because of these photographs, or so we're constantly evolving every aspect of our design. Again, this mission statement. Kind of my favorite part, right? So you have a process, stop and find the bullshit, right? Like what is pissing you off about your workflow? Is it the way you're being treated by the clients? Is it that uh, somebody comes in late or that you have to work weekends or that you don't have this license that you need to be the best artist? Like what is it? And so we determined that if we're doing a WeWork location every step of the way, why would we do HVAC the same time and start over and draw it and model it and rearrange it? That's bullshit. The same that goes for the storefronts, the mullions, the exterior parts of the building, and the floor. Why would we redo those elements if we could figure out a way? Because if we're spending 30% of our time here, there, 40% where it's really creative, that's so inefficient because we have an opportunity to capitalize on our workflow that does not exist in any other company. So in doing that, we switch it up and focus on the elements that are really, really important. The furniture, you know, then the lighting, and then my team is able to spend day, a whole day with the materials and telling a story because some things are now just completely done for us. Thank you, Railclone. We love you so much. Uh, my team has done such an incredible job in figuring out what is a problem in our workflow that takes too long. Oh, oh, okay, good. So the sprinklers, the HVAC, the exit signs, the security cameras, uh, the smoke detectors, the carbon, whatever, whatever is up here is done automatically now through Railclone. So Railclone, you're welcome for that little, you know, gift. Got five minutes. Okay, same goes for the storefront. Um, so and conference rooms and private offices and all these things that really we do every single time. Why would we keep doing it over and over? So again, using Railclone, we change the size of the doors, double, single. Put those dots, in, the dots go in the window. That's for people that don't walk into it. We learn very early on at WeWork, if you don't put a dot on the glass, People walk right into it. And same goes for neons. We, the art and graphics team creates unique neons in every single project. And so if we're gonna be doing neons in our renderings, we need to solve somehow so we don't have to manually do a neon. And again, with a rail clone, we get these results in one hour compared to six, doing the little knots and the wires. It's all done for us. We just draw the spline from what the art and graphics team has given us. And da, 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 big reveal, we have a clean library. Bullshit number one, if you don't have a clean library, you're not efficient. So it's a very easy selling point for people. It's like, hey, I have a clean library. They'll be like, can I please work for you? And so now it's so important that because we know what furniture we're gonna use every project, we know where to find it, we can categorize it because of the WeWork standards and then just dump these in. And when a team is done with a project, typically you just do shit and you don't tell anybody. And you just put it wherever the hell you want. And I'm like, nope, that, that, that's some more bullshit. And I don't want that anymore. So when a team is done, they create a PDF document saying, these are the things I've done in this project, model, material. Here's where you can find them. 
And everybody's like, oh my God, thank you. Because wasting hours and hours and hours of your day trying to find something, it, it just can't happen. So this is actually perfect timing. Uh, looking ahead, uh, you're pretty standard, unreal, you know, real time walkthrough. We really like to build off this because we, you know, for obvious reasons, it's getting much bigger in the architectural visualization world. Um, and one quick video of us, what I think is actually really great, is we're kind of porting this through an Xbox because we feel like this is a much more collaborative effort. Um, oh, there's no presentation if it doesn't have this. So, <laughs> anyway, it's me using an Xbox controller to manually go through a space. And we feel like clients, because we do have a client aspect of our, of our uh, company, and, you, and if you want to talk about my company uh, after to discuss, I'm more than happy to. I've got one minute, and I want to show you before we part the, the project management tool that we use. Nope. All right. That's fine. Um, lastly, I want to thank Chaos Group, all the, all the sponsors, all the people behind the scenes uh, to help with the logistics of getting this done, because it's, I've been to a lot of events in WeWork, and they are up all night. And so I really appreciate all the hard work getting everybody, the flights and all of that. Nova Hotel has been great. Um, and I just want to thank everybody to allowing me to represent my team and in introducing us into the world of visualization. And if you have any questions, might not have any time, but please find me throughout the weekend. Um, I didn't go into as much detail about our workflow as I you know, would have hoped. But again, if you're interested in learning more about what makes us unique, please reach out. Thank you.